Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, a Pittsburgh Steelers podcast made by fans like you, for fans like you. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, Steelers Nation. For those of you who have been here before, well, no introduction is necessary, but of course, if you are a first-time listener, well, welcome, but no introduction will do. Either way, I'm going to give you one anyways. This is the Steel City Underground podcast, and I am your host, Joe Kuzma, joining you for the one-year anniversary of being here in cyberspace and running the Steel City Underground podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your support, but just doesn't end right there. Before we dig into some housekeeping that we have to do, because we've got a lot of that that we have to do. There's things called tags. There's free agency around the corner. You got a combine. You got all these crazy things going on within the last week. I think my phone blew up. Nope, it's it's over here. Whether it's working or not is a whole other situation. But man, there's so much going on. But one of those things, put all that aside for a second. We want to put the side football. Yes, I know that's crazy, but we want to talk about family. We want to talk about something that's near and dear to one of our very own, and that would be Brian Roach. He joins me quite a bit as my co-pilot here on the podcast, specifically talking about backup quarterbacks and quarterbacks and quarterbacking. And we're going to be talking about the draft, and Brian is just a a big draft geek. But Brian is also a father. Brian is the father to a lovely daughter, Emily, who is a beautiful high school-aged girl full of life and vibrancy and She is a big, passionate Pittsburgh Steelers fan as much as any one of us. In fact, all the games she had attended at Heinz up until, I believe it was that Cowboys game, they had won. So she's also a good luck charm as well. But you know what? It may not have happened that way. It did, however, because of research in part from the March of Dimes. So we have Emily's story over on SteelCityUnderground.com. You could check that out. And we also have it linked from a page where we're helping try to raise funds this month of March for the March of Dimes. Because if it wasn't for the research that they do, Emily's story may not have the same type of happy ending that it does have. And I'm not trying to be too overdramatic, folks. I know everywhere you go, somebody's at a cash register and asking you to donate a dollar here or a dollar there. Trust me, I'm with you on that. But this is something that's close to home for all of us. This is one cause we truly, truly believe in. And it's something that you may have a little incentive to help out with. Because if you go over to SteelCityUnderground.com slash March of Dimes and put some dashes in between March of Dimes, and you'll find that there's a pop-up that pops up on the screen and we have it pinned all over social media. So... If you look for it, you'll find it. It's not too difficult to find. If you have trouble, just send us a message because you know what? If you'd like to help us help babies, we'll help you find the way to help donate and contribute to this great cause. So we have some rules over on the website, but if you go and help out and you follow the instructions that we have here, we're going to give you a chance to win, to enter this sweepstakes contest, whatever the legal terminology is we have all of that mumbo jumbo on the website but you'll have a chance to win a replica helmet signed by rocky blyer this comes from brian's personal collection and brian has been very generous to donate this we may have some other uh other prizes that are going to come out at that time at this time we haven't quite figured all of that out and of course various members uh already within this uh Steelers community the different uh writers and reporters and everybody else uh people are already jumping and and pitching in and everything like that and they're not even asking to be entered into this so this is for you fans we appreciate if you could take a moment of your time and help us like i said help us help babies because this is what the march dimes does and it is a very very heartfelt cause now that have got you down with all the feels right there from the beginning truthfully i wanted to do this without brian too because uh you know brian has been very good with with everything and i wanted to make sure i said everything to a t as to make sure 
because I mean, this is a very big, important thing for, for my buddy over there. So, uh, but I wanted to do this for him and I didn't, I didn't tell him I was going to do this on the show. So I just want to make sure, I just want to make sure that everyone is aware this is something that our whole team is behind, even though this is very big for Brian. So head on over steelcityunderground.com slash March of Dimes, March dash of dash die uh, dimes dives <sighs> let me tell you i've been tongue-tied i've been caught in mouthed i've had technology problems i'm not the only ones either for those of you on tuesday that just if you work in technology fields like i do somebody at amazon had a typo that put down the World Wide web for like four hours because everything's tied to amazon web services even steel city underground and all the different uh project management tools and communications uh, things and even social media couldn't upload a photo in some in some of these services so uh, this is uh, it's just been crazy and I, I guess even being tongue-tied I, I'm just like behind the eight ball here and with some of this housekeeping that I got to do we got to talk about some just in general getting ready for the regular season, the 2017 regular season. And as I do that, technology's not working with me. I actually had a checklist. I tell you guys, I don't have an agenda. I, I usually at least have a list of things I want to cover. There's been a lot of moves in the NFL and a lot of moves with the Pittsburgh Steelers, particularly over this past week. The NFL had been sitting on their duff, just waiting to announce this salary cap. And they had to do it sometime soon because well, the finan the financials weren't exactly solid. There, there's a number of formulas that go into figuring out all these various tags that are placed on players. Now, just to explain this, there are you basically hear the franchise tag and the transition tag, but there are two flavors or varieties of the franchise tag, and so there's technically three tags. So you have a non-exclusive tag. Uh, you have a uh, exclusive franchise tag, the non-exclusive franchise tag, and the transition tag. See, I almost told you there was four, but there's there's three. There's two different types of franchise tags there. So uh, the reason this is important is the non-exclusive tag, it's a one-year offer for a player, and it's no less than an average of the top five salaries of that player's position over the last five years or 120% of the player's previous salary, whichever is greater. Now, that's the uh, tagline that's at the back end of that. The, the, the reason that this exists is you could tag a player, uh, up to, I think, two times total. And when you go to tag him again for the following season, then it's going to be 120% because obviously the average probably isn't going to change much. It could go down. It could go up. And as is the case, we know we're talking about Le'Veon Bell here. So we always knew the mathematics. We knew the multiplier. There's these complex formulas. It's actually a little more in-depth than what I just said there. That's kind of like the vanilla generic version of that. And I try not to get into the salary cap conversation because you know what happens when I do? I get my hands slapped. There was something I saw on NFL Network last week, and we put out an article. And anybody who read it may have seen that we were talking about. In fact, you may have even seen the segment over on NFL Network. And I'm not going to uh, name the person that was on air. I'm sure it's a pretty embarrassing moment, as is that either they had the wrong information and or were giving incorrect information, of which then I, in turn, disseminated to the masses here through SCU. And that was if Adrian Peterson was not going to be re-signed by the Minnesota Vikings. It would have some impact or implication on the salary cap and drop it. Uh, the, the actual... Um, not the salary cap, but the franchise tag number, and it would drop it like $4 million or whatever. And then there were some other things that came out. There was like some funny math and blah, blah, blah. And, the, and there were some that were speculating that there was a difference in uh, the average because the exclusive franchise tag. Now, the exclusive franchise tag, the way it differs from the non-exclusive is players under the exclusive tag cannot go out and negotiate, let's say, with the Cleveland Browns who have like an insane amount of money to spend here in free agency. Something like over a hundred, over a hundred million dollars or something. I don't know. They they have something crazy out there as far as money to spend. So this exclusive tag means you, this player, they're yours. They can't go anywhere, and it's a one year deal, and it's an amount no less than the average of the top five salaries at that player's position for the current year. Now that number was actually 
that number, actually, that figure, when you do the math, you do the magic formula, the kernel's secret recipe, and arrive at what that figure ends up being. It ends up being uh, B to the non-exclusive franchise tags A. And the non-exclusive tag is actually averages out to B uh, a higher number than the exclusive. So you would think, well, that's a no-brain situation there. You just give the guy the exclusive, and he can't go out and negotiate well, with any other team. Well, not so fast because there is a clause within this collective bargaining agreement between the league's players and the league that has a, a weight. There's more. Uh, if this non-exclusive tag is actually more than an exclusive tag, it's whichever is greater. So they actually, the franchise tag, it just ends up being the same cost, at least at the running back position. Now, it's not true of every position, but the reason that that is, is wouldn't it be silly if the non-exclusive version could, would actually cost more? It would actually cost more to allow a player to go out and negotiate with another team, and you could save money by keeping him uh, just handcuffed to you, like Kirk Cousins with the Washington Redskins, for example. Let's say that guy wanted to get out of town. I'm not saying he does. I'm just using this as, for an example. It, it wouldn't make any sense. So they have to be the same cost. And in the case of the running back situation here, they are the same price. So we found out that that's a little over $12 million now that the NFL finally got off their but like a day or two ago and released these cap figures, uh, the, the final cap. And the cap keeps going up about $10 million or so a year. So this is a good thing. The players are making more money. The ownership could spend more money, blah, blah, blah. So, But it just clear up some confusion there for anything that may have been floating around. You may have seen it even through our own outlets or social media or things that we retweet or any of the other people on our team. There was a lot of misleading and, and misconstrued information. And uh, we're glad we finally got that all cleared up and out of the way. And, of course, if you weren't paying attention for the last five minutes of me yammering about these tags, this stuff can get real boring. And like I said, I am not a big expert on this. Uh, I am not the cap guru. And I, I just – I just speak. I usually just I give my opinion on it. But Le'Veon Bell, franchise tagged. Good deal there. And I expect, holy, you had to get this done. You couldn't let him enter free agency, of course. And who else? You're not going to use a franchise tag on probably anybody else. You could maybe think about using it on Lawrence Timmons, who's still unsigned. But we're going to talk about Timmons here in a second. The whole deal uh, with Le'Veon Bell He's going to get paid, folks. He's probably going to set the, set the bar. He's going to be the benchmark, the gold standard for all running back contracts going forward. So at least get him under lock and key. This is something the Steelers have done. They've done this a few times before. Uh, they franchise tagged. Let me think here. I know they franchise tagged a lineman, geez, uh, about the uh, at the end of last decade. I think Jeff Reed was another one. Lamar Woodley was for sure. And those are players then that you can negotiate and uh, – restructure and do a different deal with up to there's some date in the middle of June that they're permitted to do that or else then that's locked in. And of course they could tag him again for another year. And it may still behoove them to do that because remember Le'Veon Bell, well, he was rapping. He's got his little side gig there and he's got another album. I think he's got the full album maybe coming out. I don't, I can never tell. He's always releasing different CD covers like, um, uh, I call them CD covers. Some people don't even know what CDs are. Let me tell you, one of my uh, buddies here, you know, it's it's Eric and his fiance uh, Megan Megs, as we call her, and she does some of the graphic design work over, you'll see it on Instagram and every so often it pops up like on Facebook and on Twitter, and she does one heck of a job. I don't ever give her enough credit in the public realm. So, Megan, uh, I'll give you a high five here if you could see it. But, um, and she was telling me, I bet Megan may not even know what a compact disc is or a CD. And it's kind of scary. I think about that with my kids with technology. Uh, I don't even have like a, a DVD or disc player hooked up to the main TV in my living room anymore. Everything just streams off of these little like streaming device sticks like a Roku or Amazon Fire or whatever you got there. And even the the satellite box is like, you know, the, the, the about the... I don't know, not even, remember these things were monstrous, you know, uh, they used to be the size of like a shoebox, and now this thing isn't even the size of like, I don't know, like a, like a pocket calculator or something, so, 
uh, it got off into this tangent about technology. I just been talking about technology this, this whole time, but, uh, yeah, CD cover or album cover, or MP3 artwork, whatever you want to call Le'Veon Bell's, uh, musical work there. He's always got something different for each one of these songs. So I don't know if he has a full thing coming out, but he had talked about wanting, see, I'm coming back to it now, $15 million. Uh, I don't know if he's going to get $15 million. He's going to get guaranteed something. That's for sure. He's going to make sure. He has a nice little nest egg that hopefully, as I say, with all players, they're smart enough to uh, save some of that money. And, you know, there's it's so many sad stories out there in the NFL, and that's a story for another time and another day. But uh, the Steelers have through the middle of June to do something with Lev Bell should they choose to. I think this is a smart deal, even if they just stick with the franchise tag for one year. Not too bad. I mean, a lot of people are worried about injuries and stuff. Hey, look, I am never going to fault a player who gets hurt by something that's out of his control. And most certainly having your knee taken out from your leg is out of your control. It's not like one of these things where he was running downfield and pulled a hamstring because he's out of shape. You know what I mean? It's because he had players violently go at him. Now, I understand a lot of people are going to say, well, what about this groin injury or whatever? I mean, I think maybe we ran the wheels off this guy uh, this year. I mean, he didn't even play three games. He was suspended. So... You see the numbers he put up and the numbers he may have put up if he did play those three. Well, we're going to even take back, we'll say, four games because I forget, I always forget about that Week 17 contest against the Cleveland Browns where many of the starters sat and it was like a glorified preseason game with the exception of the Browns who were actually trying to win their second game of the year and did not. Uh, well, never let that one rest. So Le'Veon Bell, um, I'm going to talk about some fan reaction to that here in a second because we had another big deal that just happened uh, this same week, and that was the one, the biggie, the one everybody knew they were working on. Antonio Brown was still under contract for another for this season, so he'll be here another five years with a four-year contract extension. A huge, huge deal. He had been playing on a bargain basically for a long while, and he's had maybe the best three- to four-year stretch of any wide receiver in NFL history. Turns 29 in July. And he's had at least 100 catches and 1,200 yards in each, each, every one of these last four seasons. And he had just these monstrous years, 129 receptions, 1,698 yards, 136 receptions, 1,834. And he only had 106 for 1,284, but 12 touchdowns was pretty solid, a, a, a solid dozen there. In 2016, and people are thinking, well, he's, is he in decline? It's 106 catches, 1284. Holy cow, are you kidding me? This is like one of these things. I can't believe we paid this player. You cannot win sometimes. with. I swear some people just want to be miserable and hear themselves talk on social media. Uh, they're, they're not. How can you not be happy for Antonio Brown? His own teammates are happy for him. He's, this guy is going to now be a lifetime stealer. Can you imagine if you let him go somewhere else and that team won and then you're, you're just stunk? You know what I mean? I always hear everyone, and I'm not gonna go. I'm going on the soapbox. Forget it. I, you know what? I wasn't gonna do a Joe's pet peeve con or uh, Joe's pet peeve episode today, especially talking about the whole March of Dimes uh, thing that's going on. I, I wanted to be on a more serious note and a more not kind of comedic role today. But come on, folks, Darrell Revis. Okay, first the guy gets in trouble uh, in Pittsburgh and. You know, I don't know the, the whole situation. I'm not going to get into it. Some people put a, a camera phone or something in his face, and supposedly he struck somebody back or tried to take their phone or told them to buzz off. Or And then, of course, his attorney said that the guy in, uh, on film wasn't Terrell Revis. So I, I don't know. There was some controversy where his name pops up there. But the New York Jets released him this week. Uh, they said they're not going to keep him. He was long known as one of the best corners in the NFL. He is a native to the Pittsburgh area. And, you know, he did help uh, the New England Patriots get into the Super Bowl or whatever a couple years ago uh, and win that game. And everybody talks about Revis Island and how he's a shutdown corner. But you tend to forget that this is a guy that um, he, he went over, where was it, Tampa Bay, 
Uh, he had had like a really bad knee injury. I mean, he did bounce back from most of that, but he is not the same player. Last year, he was not the same player with the Jets. In fact, uh, I had a statistic here that I want to credit to. Uh, not the guy I wanted. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, this technology stuff is just beating me up today. Uh, throw, this is from at leading NFL on Twitter. And they had a statistic that said, and, and I've seen this at other places too, but this is most specifically uh, what they tweeted out. If it's somebody else's stuff, sorry, this is what I have for the credit. Darrell Rivas allowed the highest pass rating in coverage last season among all players targeted. He was the absolute worst. I could probably guess that uh, Valentino Blake was maybe the second worst of that bunch. But uh, I'm just, you know, folks, I understand you want to build an all-star team. I had this discussion almost close to a year ago when I started this podcast. Like I said, this is uh, now one year running solid, running strong here. And I, I don't mean to repeat these same topics or themes every year. I, I realize that there are exponentially more listeners now than there was then. So some of this may be new for you. But uh, there's a reason why there's parity in the NFL. And some teams like the Carolina Panthers and the Denver Broncos, who played in the Super Bowl the previous year, didn't even make the playoffs this season. It's because you cannot keep every Every player that you have on your roster from year to year. The Denver Broncos, of course, losing Brock Osweiler, uh, maybe heir apparent quarterback. That may have actually helped them, by the way, but <laughs> there are other players that they didn't hold on to as well. I think um, uh, Malik uh, Jackson, I think was his name. Oh, God, I'm drawing a blank now. But uh, Josh Norman's a good example, actually, with the, with the Panthers. He was going to be franchise tagged. They rescinded it. He goes to the Redskins. And, you know, it's just one of those things where what I'm trying to say is if you could build all-star teams, I mean, everybody thinks that the Steelers aren't doing something right necessarily, uh, that they're, why aren't they doing what the New England Patriots do? Well, the New England Patriots, I hate to tell you, some players go there, they get the right mix, they get things that go their way, they get to be they get luck. They, every team has luck. I mean, come on. Um hello, the Steelers with the Antonio Brown and the whole goal line immaculate extension thing this year. You get lucky sometimes. So I don't necessarily want to discredit the New England Patriots as a whole as much as I dislike them. And I dislike them because they win obviously and they beat the Steelers. But you know what? Some of the guys that they get there no other team's going to get this opportunity to get Chris Long to play for Peanuts or Martellus Bennett to play for Peanuts. There are people in Boston up there, Boston, the New England area, that are telling Martellus Bennett on social media publicly to take a hometown discount. And he's telling them where to stick it, where the sun doesn't shine, because he's like, no, I'm going to go get paid. I'm not sticking around. And uh, I got my Super Bowl ring. I'm out. And Chris Long's that way now, too. And it's like, there's a reason for this. This is a business it is a very, you have a finite amount of shelf life to, to yourself. Your commodity uh, is that you're a football player. Your commodity is your body. You will get banged up. You will age. You will burn out. You will be replaced. There are how many players right now that are going through the combine that have declared for the NFL draft? What? Like at least like three, 400 kids. How many jobs are there in the NFL? Think about this. 53-man active roster, 10 players on the practice squad, times 32. Just do some rudimentary math. Let's just say it's like 50 times 30, right? So um, was that about 1,500? I mean, you're looking at like maybe 20% turnaround or whatever. Now, not all these guys that get drafted or go through the combine will be drafted or make a team, but they're going to show up in camp. You're going to have these 90-man rosters. That's why I say they almost get slashed in half. There's all this new blood, and people are trying to gun for your job, like a Darrell Rivas. So not everybody's necessarily a fit. And you got to also think about Darrell Rivas. He, he may not want to play any more football. It may not be worth his while. He has made a tremendous amount of money in the league, and if he's feeling any ailments from those injuries that he's had, and he just doesn't feel like giving it a go anymore. And he's got his ring right. He might be on his way out. And that's what one of the rumors is. Why is it going to come to the Steelers? The Steelers are spending their money on their own guys. They're spending on Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. And people are giving us, like, 
they're giving us grief over it. I can't figure that out to save my life because Antonio Brown, if you had the opportunity, if he was not a Steeler and you had the opportunity to bring him to the Steelers, would you not want the best wide receiver in football on your team? I'm sure everybody would be saying they would be praising this deal if he played for, like, let's say the Dallas Cowboys or the Patriots or somebody else or the Denver Broncos and he came over and signed with the Steelers as this big free agent acquisition. You would be praising that deal. But I don't know why people are saying, oh, well, he's going to be 29. He's going to be this old and that old. I mean, come on, man. I mean, players certainly play north of 32. I know Terrell Owens was still putting up the numbers. Jerry Rice was still out there doing it. Isaac Bruce was out there doing it. Well, T.O.'s not in the Hall of Fame, but those other guys, Hall of Fame caliber, uh, Hall of Fame, at least nominated. And, of course, Jerry Rice is in the Hall of Fame. And there's countless others that we could put into this same category. Antonio Brown's work ethic is just one of a kind. He's a unique special talent, just as Le'Veon Bell is as well. These are the guys you want to pay this, this is what you want for an all-star team. When you say that they need more help around Antonio Brown, well, don't you want more help around Ben Roethlisberger? It's got to start with having Antonio Brown out there. So stop the mindless nonsense of talking about, well, we don't want Antonio Brown or why are we paying these guys? Hey, not everybody else's trash is our treasure. Why don't we take care of the guys that we've actually put in? This is the perfect storm for the Pittsburgh Steelers right now that I have to say. Uh, you look at what they've accomplished, and I have this. This is from uh, Scott Kazmar on Twitter, at F-O underscore Scott Kazmar. And the Steelers haven't gotten a full game out of Ben Bell Brown and Martavis Bryant, who is off and on. We're hearing rumors about him applying for reinstatement. We hope that he comes back for this 2017 season. The Steelers would still have him for two years, by the way, because the last season doesn't count as far as the contract. So, they they haven't gotten a full game with all four of these guys on the field in the last 39 games. Just holy cow. It's either one of them gets hurt, somebody's suspended. Talk about killer bees. You can't even get all these guys on the field at the same time. Now, this time last year was right around, I think, free agency started. The Steelers signed Ladarius Green. You're very excited because now they have the tight end. You're going to have Martavis Bryant for a full year. Oh, nope some drug-related thing, and then the Bell News comes out right after that, and the whole season seems to be falling apart. But at this very time when you're talking about, well, they needed help. Well, they, they went out and got it. They went out and got Green, and they thought they were going to have Bryant. And they also drafted Sammy Coates to be that type of guy behind Bryant, too, in case they had some inkling that Bryant would get in trouble, of course. We thought that that was a conspiracy theory. May turn out to be right, but they had Sammy Coates, and Sammy Coates goes out and just destroys his hand and can't catch a football. Now, he may have been challenged to do that in the first place, but he certainly flashed the talent. Does anybody remember the first five games of the regular season where he and Big Ben had connected on, like, I think a 40 yard or longer uh, catch, pass, and reception? through the first five games of the season, every single one of those games he was catching a deep ball. And then they were saying that the Steelers' offense was too reliant on the deep ball. <laughs> but now Sammy Coates is no good. Everybody's saying, oh, Martavis Bryant isn't. He won't be reinstated. And Ladarius Green, well, that guy's just garbage because he's dealing with concussion issues or injuries. Come on. I mean, it's not exactly the ideal situation of what we want. We want everybody on the field and healthy. Trust me, I do as well. But the Steelers... They have all these components in place already. So just kicking it ahead and looking at free agency, if you want a corner, that's fine. I mean, we don't know what's going on yet with Ross Cockrell. He used to be a restricted free agent. Haven't heard a whole lot of buzz on him. I doubt he's at the priority uh, level yet because I know that the Steelers are looking at Lawrence Timmons, an inside linebacker. He may test free agency, and that's okay, and I try to tell people this too. There's almost like a wink-wink handshake deal between general managers, these front offices, and the players. This is a business. And as such, Lawrence Timmons has made a lot of money over the last few years, highest-paid Steelers defender for a while now, and they're probably not feeling like he's worth that same dollar amount. I know I'm not saying he is or isn't. But what they're going to do is is they're going to say, Law Dog, you want to go out and see what kind of offers you're going to get? And he's going to get some. And this is the same thing the New England Patriots are going to do right now with Dante Hightower. Because that linebacker, they've said they're not going to use the franchise tag on. They probably feel the franchise tag is too high versus what they want to pay or can pay. There's also that. You only have so much room. There is a cap. There is a ceiling to this whole thing. You only have so much budget. So in, in doing that, you got to look ahead too. 
What other guys are we going to have to pay here in the near future? Ryan Shazier, Stephon Tuitt. These are guys that are going to be coming up in contract years. I think this is the perfect storm for the Steelers, though, because what's going to happen with Timmons is he's probably going to go out and the Steelers are saying, hey, don't go signing anything. Let us know what they let us know what they're offering you. And I know that both sides have said they want each other back. They haven't come to a mutual agreement just yet, at least as of this recording. With as fast as this news is coming out, you could be listening to this and it's already been done. So I'm going to put that disclaimer out there in case I'm not ahead of the game. But I expect Lawrence Timmons to be back. It's just a matter of, hey, what's the market for you? And I think that's going to happen with a few other players too, such as like Landry Jones. You still got to be looking, uh, though, starting corner, the other starting inside linebacker. They could roll with Vince Williams. They could draft another guy. You got James Harrison coming back, a two-year deal. A lot of people question that. Why two years? Well, they've done it with other players, or they've extended or structured, and they hadn't necessarily played that final season. Polamalu still had a year on his contract, did not play it. Heath Miller had another year on his contract, retired. Brett Kiesel released. I want to say Ike Taylor was in that group, too, but Ike Taylor may have just not been re-signed and ended up retiring. So it's common. It's just the financial thing. It's kicking some of the money, kicking that can down the road. The Steelers are finally free of a lot of those deals that they had. I mentioned some of those, and then there was, of course, Cortez Allen and Lamar Woodley was a very big deal that didn't pan out for any variety of reasons. So now they have this money and they're spending it on their own guys and they're getting chastised for it. I don't understand it. But this is the way it, it should be. I think the offense has the weapons. They have everything in place already. They just need guys to be healthy. So everyone that's out there and wants them to sign or draft a wide receiver or now tight end, you might want some insurance. I'm not completely sold. Ladarius Green will be 100% 16-game starter. He has not proven to be that ever. But then again, he hasn't been a 16-game starter ever in the in league with his four years with San Diego either, though. So, okay, maybe there. But otherwise, guys, I don't know. This seems like, to me, the focus. I don't think the Steelers are going to really dip their toes in the free agency other than maybe get some depth, some guys that could play like special teams, maybe add a linebacker or somebody in the secondary. Could even bring Justin Gilbert back for that for that matter. But it's not going to be Darrell Rivas. Darrell Rivas is, I hate to say washed up, but it's it's probably past his time. Uh, some other deals that they got, I mean, they got all the linemen locked up. Well, they're trying to lock up uh, exclusive rights. Uh, free agent is a big Al Alejandro Villanueva. And instead of just signing him to the cheapy deal that they've been doing for the last two years because he was on a futures contract, left tackles get paid a lot of money. Left tackles are very valuable in football, as we know. They're going to try and get this guy set for several years. And I think what they're trying to do is, is to make sure they have all five of these linemen for the entire year. And by the way, Alejandro Villanueva, the only player on the Steelers' offense to play every single snap of the 2016 season. That's incredible. So you got him. The Castro's locked up for several years. Pouncey's locked up as long as Big Ben is here, as far as I'm aware. Marcus Gilbert, several years. Ramon Foster signed a three-year deal last year. So you got at least this two-year window that they're looking at right now. And that also would include Martavis Bryant. If he's reinstated, stays clean, and doesn't get suspended, doesn't get in any type of trouble. You've got Antonio Brown now that's going to be here for an extended amount of time. They're working on keeping Bell here for an extended amount of time, and you've already got Ben here for quite a while through what, the 2019 season, 2020, something like that, when he becomes a free agent. So, uh, of course, we know where Ben will be. He just celebrated his 35th birthday. Happy birthday, Big Ben, uh, by the way. So, I, I don't know, man. It looks awful good to me, don't you think? So what do you need on the other side? It's just those couple moves. Ross Cockrell, Lawrence Timmons, trying to figure it out. you got James Harrison coming back at least for one more season, maybe mentor some guy that they end up getting in the draft. Doesn't seem like you're going to get anybody in free agency that's going to be a big splash. doesn't seem like the Steelers have a whole lot of needs, but we're not going there just yet. That was all of the housekeeping moves on all the maneuvers and all the free agency things going on. We're going to be talking draft a lot. We're going to be talking about combine, and we're going to be talking more about free agency in the coming episodes. Have some surprises for you and hopefully have some of our special additions like the WTF and the JPP back within the next week. So, folks, Head on over. Don't forget about the March of Dimes deal that we're doing. Give, your chance, give yourself a chance to win this rock, signed Rocky Blyer helmet as well as helping a great cause. Until next time, be safe, be good, and I will catch you later. 
We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 